They say that when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But when I'm a chainsaw, everything looks like a lumber. I don't know if I'll even need to do any measuring. Famous last words, right? <laughs> if you got a comment like that, just leave it to yourself. Otherwise, I'm just gonna delete it anyways. <laughs> we don't need the drama. Hi there, yo folks. It's Work With Me Wednesday. If you're looking for a place to watch somebody work on big projects, little projects, no matter what the magnitude of the projects are, you just wanna watch somebody work, well, you've come to the right place. I've got two primary projects I'd like to knock out today. But before I get into it, I just wanna thank you, my loyal yo folk audience for helping me answer some questions in my previous video about some some confusion i had about seed starts i am so pleased at the inundation of comments that i got helping me with some of my questions so thank you now let's get to work man it's a chilly one today it's kind of a bummer because we've gotten used to some pretty warm weather we were getting up close to 80 just last week and now it's in the 40s right now. It got down to the 20s last night. I will say this, I love working in this weather. I love crisp weather to do physical labor because you don't get super hot and sweaty. Just layer up, get some good outer coat, outer layer on and you're ready to go. Now, what am I doing today? Well. The primary thing I wanted to take on was get the eye hooks set for my roost. Quick walkthrough of what I've done in here and what this stall is all about. This is where I'll be keeping my future meat chickens. As opposed to our laying chickens, they'll live on the south side of the barn. The layer ch or the meat chickens, they're going to live on the north side of the barn. I'm going to make some modifications but use this lean-to up here and set a fence that goes down into the woods or maybe over there into mom and dad's side of the homemaker. I'm not sure yet, but this will be their primary run. I'm going to keep them separate from the layer chicken, chickens, and this is going to be their coop. Now there's some issues to address here, which I'll probably talk about in a little bit, but I decided that for their roosting arrangement, I'm going to try having them roost on a raised platform, a hanging platform, which I made largely from saplings that I cut down in the back pasture, sweet gum trees and a couple of other things. I think there's a cedar that I knocked down too, but good wood to serve as roosting bars, along with some cast off wood that was up in the hayloft that I was had nothing else I was doing with it. So I repurposed it and made it into this frame. Now this frame is going to hang in the middle of this room here. When I say I wanna get the eye hook set, basically I'll probably get some chain. I don't have the chain right now, so I'm just gonna use rope as a temporary measure and put some eye hooks up, four eye hooks, one for each corner of the platform, and hang that platform probably about two and a half, maybe three feet off the ground, something like that. It'll be a good place for the chickens to roost, and it'll give them an area to kind of peck and hang out underneath. I'm giving it a shot. It's an experiment. Another thing I can do is lean the roost against here, but I'm curious about giving this, this platform a shot just because it's less permanent. I can take it out and use this stall for other things. If I install a uh, roost that's actually uh, bolted to the wall here, it might be a little bit more cumbersome to take out. And honestly, you know what? It sounds fun. I like trying things. As long as the animals are going to be safe and it will be effective, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try out and see how it, how it works. So. That's my goal today is to get the eye hooks installed in the ceiling and in the frame itself, which I think should be pretty simple, but I, I've learned, and as my viewers, you've probably learned this too, that I will always start these shows off saying that something's going to be very simple and almost invariably it never ever is. But that being said, I will, I do think this is going to be a simple project. So. Let's get to it. 
The first thing I need to do is establish where I want my southwest corner of the platform to be. So that's easy. I don't even need to measure it out. I just need to pick a corner spot. And I think that's going to be it right there. Let me get a little pilot hole going. Am I happy with that spot? I am happy with that spot. Little pilot hole. And then we crank this thing in. Can you see it? It's just a little eye hook, whatever you call it. And I just need to give it a good crank. And you know, honestly, I shall, I'll probably get a screwdriver. I found that it's a lot easier to get these things in if you have fulcrum point. Yeah, this will make things a lot easier. I can just turn it in, get it in there nice and good, and I'll have it facing vertically so I can hang either a chain, well, eventually a chain, but today I'm gonna try it with a rope. That's in there pretty good. Why don't I give it just another crank just to be on the safe side. All right, there we go. There's one. Now this is where things get a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna bring in the platform and see where my other corner is. Here it is right here. And I'll set it down, assuming that one corner will be here. You know, this actually works out pretty perfectly. Need to move some stuff. But this corner will be right about here. And the camera, the tripod is in the way. Of course it is. But I can still get a general idea of where that corner is going to be. It's going to be right about here, which means this corner is going to be right here which means I'm gonna to wanna to put it to the inside up there. I don't know if I'll even need to do any measuring. Famous last words, right? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. Let's see what happens. All right, set you back out for now. Just a little pilot hole. One of the things you need to get used to if you're going to be getting into homesteading <laughs> at all, and I say homesteading, but that's such a loaded term. Not a loaded term, but it, it doesn't really have any meaning anymore. What is homesteading? Like if you have a, a, back, a quarter acre backyard and you've got a lot of plants that you grow for yourself, that's kind of homesteading. What if you have 60 acres and you're completely off grid? Well, that's homesteading too, but I'm I'm getting off my point. The point I was trying to make, if you're going to get into a life of self-sufficiency, you can't expect everything to be perfect. Everything needs to be functional. Um, you can't do things in a way that are, they're gonna break, but you have to resign yourself to certain imperfections. And that's something that's been tough for me to do. I think we're good there. Let's get the other two in, strap the thing up, see what it looks like. Actually, you know what, before I hang rope, let me get the eye hooks in this beast first. So it'll be one easy process. I said it before, but I love this weather. Early spring where it's sunny and the grass is green and the sky is blue, but it's still crisp enough to wear a coat. That's perfect working weather in my book. I hope the weather's nice where you are. If you're in North America like me, then spring is upon us. And depending on your latitude, it may be warmer or colder than where I'm at. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, and I guess you're getting ready for fall. Fall is also a favorite season of mine. It's those mid-season, spring and fall, that are my favorite. Summer can just get really nasty hot, and winter can get really nasty cold, but spring and fall are generally pretty temperate and nice. Those are my two favorite seasons. All right, I think we're in a good place. Let's, now let's tie some rope. Eventually, I'm probably gonna wanna use chain to hang this thing, but before I, I don't have the chain, I'll just be honest, I don't, we don't have enough chain to do that right now, but we do have rope. I did have some rope lying around, so, for this test run, I'm gonna hang the thing using rope. And, you know, it's funny because I just got done talking about how perfection isn't necessary and it's okay that things aren't perfect. Well, one area where you do want perfection is 
knots where you're hanging uh, things from, you want those to be perfect. You don't want to cut corners on that. So I'm going to use what's called a Davy knot. I've used that before for tying ropes. Two eye hooks. I don't know who you are, Davy, but you made a fine knot. So I'm going to go around and get myself some nice length on each of these eye hooks tied to them, tied with a Davy knot on this rope. All right. It's a really simple knot. And if you're looking for a simple knot to hold a load for you and you're working with an eye hook, look up the Davy knot because it's very, very simple and very effective. It holds the load quite well. And I'm gonna cut this, let's see, I'll do another Davy knot at the bottom. So I'll give myself some room. This isn't going anywhere. This is, this is nice and secure for what I need it to do. It's also best, best practice when you're working with these things to solder off the end, burn the tip of it, just to give it a little extra with this type of rope, this type of twine, whatever you want to call it, just to prevent it from fraying. Again, I don't know if I'm going to have these permanent, so I may or may not do that. Don't get caught up on me now. We were doing so well together, you and I, rope. Let's not tarnish this relationship of ours. Okay, last one. You want a closer look at my friend Davey and this knot. This gives you a good idea. Gives itself tension when you pull on it from the load. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, and I've been waiting for it too, let's hang this thing and see how it, see how it goes. I'm going to go up pretty high. Like I said, I want it to be maybe two and a half feet off the ground. So let's give ourselves plenty of room. Great right there that height seems about right let's do the other side now it's funny i mentioned these things having a tendency to fray and that's why they recommend burning the tips of them so they won't do that if i was going to have these be permanent i would do that right now but this is just for my edification to see if this will if this will hang how i want it to that seem about right to you guys? There we go. Last one. Now that we have it in place, this is exactly what I was envisioning was a hanging platform. A couple of things of concern right off the bat. I'm a little concerned that so this is this door opens obviously and this is going to be the primary ingress and egress route of the chickens i don't want this being too close to the entrance the exit slash entrance if you have chickens you know when they come in at night a lot of times they'll just come flying in this might be a little too close which would require me going up and moving this but then again i could lift this up a bit higher and they're free to move in under it. Now, the other question <laughs> that's coming to mind, and you might be asking the same thing, this takes up a lot of room in here. It eats up a lot of space within the actual coop room itself, which I want to be able to get in here and move hay around. But the way that I'm thinking about that is it is not hard for me to get in here and move around, especially if it's during the day and the chickens aren't in here, if I need to get hay or something. When I have this on chains, it'll be very, I'll just have carabiner clips and I'll just unclip the thing. It'll be very easy for me to do that. So there are some drawbacks to this method, but I think there are some positives as well. The main positive being this thing will be very easy to remove when I want to use this stall for something else. Maybe I don't want to keep the meat chickens in here, this thing. Again, I'll have it on chains, I'll get carabiner clips, I'll just unclip it and move it. I'm sure you guys may have some other thoughts about how this will go, but in terms of like an actual space for the chickens to roost on, I think this is very nice, very adequate. Some people have brought up like, well, what if it swings too much when they're trying to get on? I've seen videos of these things in action and they're generally pretty stable once the chickens are in for the night. That might be something I need to amend and and put some sort of uh, panel down to keep it balanced. I'm not sure. I, I thought I'd give this a try and see what it looks like. I like the way it looks. I think I can work with it. There are pros and cons. Maybe I'd 
take this whole thing down and just stack it up against the side. I'm still not sure yet, but I kind of like the way it looks. What do you guys think? There's a lot to consider here, but I'll continue to tweak until I get this right. What's the timeline for getting those meat chickens? Well, I've been chatting with Kathy from Two Turtles Homestead and she always has breast eggs available. So it's whenever I'm ready to start incubate, incubating them. And I'm probably gonna incubate them here on the Osted. I think once our current batch of chicks, the 12, once we move them into the A-frame here in the next two weeks or so, that's when I'll start the incubation process for our meat chickens, the uh, breasts. And that'll give me time to tinker and learn and experiment and try different things and come up with solutions for the problems that I'm facing. But I'm pretty confident that I'll figure something out. Speaking of poultry, all 11 of our hatchlings, the eggs that we incubated here on the homestead that the Kramer Life gave to us, all 11 of those hatchlings are doing well. They're what, two weeks old now? Time really flies when you're a growing chicken. It was very cold last night. It was down into the low 20s, so I gave them their heat panel back. So they have the heat lamp and the heat panel. They've got extra heat. And it's still kind of chilly, so they've got those two sources of heat. But they're growing quick. They've already got quite a few of their wing feathers on. Some of them have their tail feathers. Some of them are being a little aggressive, which makes me think roosters. And that's what you get when you incubate your own eggs, is you're going to get some roosters. And so I actually wanted, wanted to address that a little bit. Somebody left a comment that, well, I'll just say it. It was a really rude comment. I ended up deleting it. I rarely delete comments, but when people are being rude for the sake of being rude and there's, it's criticism, but it's not constructive, they get the boot. <laughs> I just delete those comments. And this person, I don't remember the exact phrasing of it, but they said something to the effect of, how dare you raise up roosters just to kill them? They didn't choose the fact that they were born as roosters you're cold-hearted or something like that. If you saw the, that comment and it's no longer there, it's because I deleted it. We don't need non-constructive root comments. I'll just kick them off. But to respond to that, I don't just plan on just killing roosters for sport. We would eat them. Uh, we would turn them into stew. We'd use them for sustenance, just like we do with meat chickens. And if we don't eat them, then we'll give them away to somebody who wants a rooster. And Knowing the Kramer life, they raise some really beautiful chickens. So I have a feeling the roosters that we do get from this batch, they're gonna be incredible roosters. Maybe I'll hold on to one or two. Right now we only have one rooster, Russell, and he's awesome, he's beautiful, but maybe we mix things up and we add another rooster to the flock. The rest of them, we either eat, sell, or give to somebody that wants a rooster. Maybe even the Kramer life would want some of those roosters back, we'll see. But to imply that I just kind of callously kill them for fun with a grin on my face, come on, we don't need that. <laughs> that's, that's drama for the sake of drama. That's something we would never do here. We love our animals, even when we dispatch them. It's, it's a hard concept, I think, for a lot of modern folk to realize is, is that there's a lot of love behind dispatching animals. Um, we raise them, we make sure they have a good life, and when we take them out, we do so in a way that's very quick and painless and humane, and we use them for something. We use them for things like sustenance. So that's all I'll say about that. But in the meantime, if you got a comment like that, just leave it to yourself. Otherwise, I'm just going to delete it anyways. <laughs> we don't need the drama on the channel, do we, chickies? <laughs>What's my next project? Well, it's a fun one. It involves the garden, which real quick, let me give you a quick update on that. I've gone through and most of the beds are weed free and ready to go. One thing that Holly mentioned to me that I've been thinking about, we mentioned, hey, we're gonna do the living lanes, but we're wondering, I think I mentioned this in the past video, the Bermuda grass is growing wonderfully all around the garden, but in the garden itself, it hasn't been. It's mostly been brown and dead. And in the beds, it really hasn't grown at all. That was our big concern, was keeping that Bermuda grass out of the beds. And it mostly has stayed out of the beds completely. After all these years, <laughs> working this garden and, and really trying our best to get that Bermuda grass down, did we finally manage to neutralize it? Will it, will it leave us alone this year? I'm afraid to say yes, because I'm afraid I'll jinx it. But part of me wonders, 
Normally by this time, like this time last year, we were still battling Bermuda grass in these beds. And so far, I mean, take a look. There's no Bermuda grass in these at all. There may be a stray little barb here and there, but for the most part, they're clear. So the garden's going to be ready soon. Obviously, we're going to get some compost trucked in and compost from our own compost pile that we've been curating over the past few years to add to these beds. But as a blank slate and empty canvas, they're pretty good. Now, one area that needs some help is the herb garden. The herb garden, we do deal with grass. And as you can see, the grass is still a major issue there. The border around the herb garden we used these old logs, and this was several years ago, and these were dead logs. I didn't realize it at the time, but they were dead, rotten logs that I used to border this whole flower garden, this whole herb garden. They gotta go. I gotta take these things out and burn them. What can I use to replace it? Well, you'll remember a few videos back, I discovered the joy of cutting down saplings on my own property. So we've already got several thick beams that are cedar or uh, sweet gum that I will use as a border. Will they stay here forever? Probably not. They'll probably rot down within a few years, but it's very easy for me to get wood to replace them. So I'm going to get rid of this old rotted wood that's surrounding this herb garden. I'm going to replace it with wood that we've cut down in the back pasture. Even though it's not a log I cut down, I did find this nice old 4x4 four four that I wanted to use. Thought it looked good here. They say that when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But when I'm a chainsaw, everything looks like a lumber. The hip new workout for 41 year old men is carrying trees. There's a, there's a back joke in there. And I know, I know I said don't be rude earlier, but that one's ripe for the taking. There it is, there's the edge, the new edge. How long will these logs last? I don't know. We might get a few years out of them, but it's better than those rotten things that we had. And I feel better about reattacking this herb garden now. Well, I had two projects I needed to finish today and I finished them. It's such a cliche, but when you live on a piece of land like this, and you've got a homestead or a hobby farm or whatever you want to call it. There's always, always work. There's always projects. And the challenge is deciding which of those projects deserve your attention. There'll always be things to do here till the day I die. And I'm going to continue to do things and record them on Work With Me Wednesdays. Sorry, I just had to stop and look at the majesty of this turkey. It may be a rumor. It may not be true. But I seem to remember hearing that the founding fathers of the United States, Benjamin Franklin originally said that the, the official country bird, the official bird of the United States should be a turkey and not an eagle, not a bald eagle. I don't know if that's true. Ben Franklin, if you're, if you're listening to me up there and I'm wrong, I'm sorry about that, but I seem to remember reading that somewhere. Anyways, what was I saying? I'll always have stuff to do. There'll never be a dearth of projects. 
we'll see where things go with that platform roost, that hanging roost. I've got some time to think about it. There'll be a few weeks before I start incubating the meat chickens out. I think after I incubate the meat chickens, the next animal on the list will be turkeys. I want to get more turkeys. And the more I think about it, the more I think that the the Yostead is, is kind of a turkey farm. We love turkeys here, but maybe breast chickens. And I've also been reading about a unique breed of Japanese chicken that has me very, very interested as well. It was a productive Wednesday, and I thank you for hanging out with me. Until we see you again next time, remember, as always, slowly, slowly. <laughs>